Only one specialist batter in Indian Test history has played 50 games and averaged less than 35. Only one opener in the history of Indian men's tests has centuries in Australia, England and South Africa. Who? The answer to both questions, KL Rahul. Yes, that guy who keeps dividing opinion. I mean, there are some who point to that limitless ceiling. How many batters can you think of, after all, who both hit 14 ball 50s in the IPL and gone more than 100 balls without a boundary in a test innings to lay the foundation of an away win? And then there are those who point to the frustration. Because how many batters can you think world over who played 50 tests and averaged less than 35? Keeping the ambit to just the 21st century, other than KL Rahul, just these five. Let's wind the clock back. Rahul's debut series and his first three knocks in the India Whites, almost a decade ago now, almost gave a perfect glimpse of what was to come. He was out to two shocking shots on debut at the MCG, but followed it up with a fine century as opener at the SCG. He also batted in three different positions in those first three innings. And this aspect of fluctuating roles would come to play a role a little ways down the road. Um, he looked you know, completely comfortable. I mean, he gave a couple of chances, but he still looked good. Um, and, you know, I, I think there's a bit there for the future for him. He's, he's got a real, um, you know, a real chance to score some serious runs in Test cricket. Here. Let's break down Rahul's Test career in phases. The early days were quite all or nothing, really. Because in his first six tests, spanning 19 months, none of which were played at home, Rahul had eight scores below 20, seven of which were single-digit scores. And yet, look at his other three innings. Centuries. Here. Here. And here. One test match in Australia, another in Sri Lanka, this one here in West Indies. So it's not been easy and he's always got his opportunities when somebody has been dropped or injured. Maybe after this, he might be the number one sort of opener slotted. You know, maybe number three could be his uh, you know, slot. Hopefully he'll get a position as, as a matter of right from now on. So two years into his test career, KL Rahul had still not played a test at home. He was finding it hard to break into India's 11 every time they played in India. But the chance finally arrived through the long home season of 2016-17. And the scores weren't so great. They were quite middling, in fact, until the big one in the last test of 2016. 199 against England in Chennai. This was the innings that took Rahul into the next phase of his career. The best phase of his career, because 2017 is the year when Rahul started looking like the real deal. In a span of 10 tests, he crossed 50 10 times in 15 innings, including 6 times out of 7 in the Border Gavaskar Trophy against Australia, which included vital contributions in India's wins in Bengaluru and Dharamshala. So Rahul was clearly thriving in home comforts after finally getting a chance, but the honeymoon was only going to last so long. India was set for a long period of being on the road, playing away tests, and that's when the next phase began when the high of 2017 came crashing down in 2018. Over the course of 22 innings, Rahul averaged only 22. And for a class player like him, his being out of form has just lasted a bit too long because he's got exceptional physical skills as a batsman. So obviously the brain is all scrambled, the confidence mm. is down and he's looking actually hopeless at the moment. Rahul's stocks were in free fall and they hit rock bottom when India reached Australia towards the end of 2018. He featured in the first two tests, but scores of 2 and 0 at Perth meant that India preferred a debutant and a non-opener as their openers of choice come the third test at the MCG. After the snub, Rahul managed to get three games in 2019. But more importantly, by the time the next home season arrived, India had a new opener, Rohit Sharma. Rohit was firing, Mayank Agarwal was soaring, Prithvi Shaw was in waiting and Shubman Gill was knocking on the horizon. The road back was going to be a hard one and Rahul went nearly two years without a game until a lucky break took Rahul into the next phase of his career. England 2021. Gill 
who was by now first choice opener alongside Rohit Sharma, was out injured. Next in line was Mayank Agarwal, and he was hit on the head in the nets, ruling him out of the first test. Next in line, you guessed it, runs in Nottingham, a match-winning hundred at Lords. Rahul was back. Yeah, it's been a fairy tale uh, comeback for KL Rahul. Uh, uh, but you know the way he batted in Nottingham just got back the confidence and uh, told and you know so, sort of convinced himself that he belonged uh, at the highest level and he's capable of performing at Test match cricket level. Rahul added another away century and another player of the match gong in Centurion before the year ended. And by the time the year turned, a man who couldn't find a spot in the team until months earlier was now India's 34th Test captain. And here began the wildest seesaw in the career of seesaws. Because a year where Rahul led India in three of the four tests he played would also be a year where once again he started faltering in his primary job. He stood in for Virat Kohli in South Africa, Later in the year, he stood in for Rohit Sharma in Bangladesh, but in eight innings that he batted, he only managed 137 runs. Rahul managed to hold on to his spot for the Bora Gavaskar Trophy with Australia coming to India in early 2023. But just like the previous edition, he was out of the mix after two tests. I've been disappointed with his approach a little bit. Uh, he's somebody who's looking like uh, just occupying the threes. He's not looking to score runs. Uh, he's not the old self of KL Rahul. So sometimes a break helps you, I feel. Uh, this break will help him to, you know, think about his game uh, more. Rahul lost his vice-captaincy, his test spot, and then got injured during the IPL, leaving him no chance of featuring in the WTC final. Around this time, India had also lost Rishabh Pant to an accident, which meant KS Bharat and then Ishan Kishan were donning the keeping gloves for India in tests. Why are we talking wicket keepers? Yes. Enter next twist. Enter next phase. By the end of 2023, India were quite desperately searching for wicket keepers who could offer more with the bat. And in the ODI filled months just preceding this phase, Rahul had shown himself capable of that and more. That paved the way for yet another test comeback for KL Rahul and the return was nothing short of a dream. For the second time in as many visits, Rahul was a centurion in centurion, the first visiting batter ever to do so. In a low-scoring series, it was the standout knock for India and it also showed Rahul could belong in this new role. That When I see KL Rahul bat, whatever the format, I just like him batting down the order. And we saw you know, why he's so good down the order. A good defensive technique if the second new ball comes along, it's something that he has. India's next assignment was a home series against England. Kohli was absent, so Rahul was promoted to number four. And in the series opener in Hyderabad, he looked comfortably India's best batter in a rare home defeat for them. On a personal level, it was quite an ideal start to a long five-match series. Rahul was in fine form. His reputation was being rebuilt. So, of course, something had to give. Injury, and he was sidelined for the rest of the series. And that brings us here. Nearly a decade in, it's been some ride. You could call it a pendulum, you could call it a seesaw, you could call it a roller coaster, maybe mix all of the above and you get KL Rahul's test career. Through these many ebbs and flows, the one common criticism of Rahul has been that he's had the look of a confused batter, perhaps someone who's not quite met up to the challenges of being an all-format player. And yet that is one vital distinction 10 years later. Now Rahul finds himself out of the mix in T20Is. He knows India don't play too many ODIs in the near future. So here comes a chance to refocus on the format that brought him to the international stage in the first place. A decade later, can KL Rahul finally find his feet in Test cricket and deliver on the unfulfilled promise? The opportunity recommences against Bangladesh in Chennai, the same Chennai where he hit his highest Test score back in 2016.